Hello my lovelies, welcome back to another episode of Point and Click Puzzle Games with myself, Angela McCall, where we have been on a journey to develop a tic-tac-toe, also known as Noughts and Crosses, mobile app game. Now we are up to lesson five in this little like mini series as it were, and today we're going to be looking at event handling and what event listeners are. So um, if you have been following my tutorials so far, please do bear in mind that this is a video in a sequence, although I am trying very hard to make sure that when I present my videos they work as standalone um, solutions as well if you are struggling with your own events at the moment or learning this stuff and remember that my videos are aimed at teenagers upwards and adults who have never coded before and that actually want to start learning some coding uh, using a very simple coding language called Lua. So that's it and we're going to crack on and look at how to handle events today and how to call those and make those events initialize and take place. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to dive right on over to my left-hand side monitor screen. And if you have, if you can, just uh, please do subscribe, stay notified to my channel, and add any of your comments or questions below in the YouTube comments section below this video. So, this is exactly where we left off at the end of uh, lesson four. Now, um, just to help tidy things up a little bit, so that we can see what's going on. At the moment, we're not interested in drawing these characters, so I still want them there, but I'm just going to set them to full so that they don't clutter up our display and we can see past them and get some of the noise out the way there we go so this is how our game sort of technically would happen to load and then what we need is when we click on these different boxes we um, as the user of our game are telling the app that we want to place a character there whether it's a null or a cross so the first thing that we actually need to do is make our app listen to an event such as me clicking with my mouse whilst we're on the computer environment but obviously when this becomes an app on a device like a kindle or a tablet or a mobile phone or something like that then that tap will be coming from the finger touching the display screen so the app needs to listen for events taking place so first of all we need to code in its ability to do exactly that so i'm going to come over to my code up here let's get rid of this um, and inside our draw square, first of all, we're going to give it an identity because w it's all very well saying, yeah, you've tapped on me, but we don't know which square is being tapped on. So we need to number it so that the square itself knows it has its own name and identity, a bit like a teacher in a classroom going, oi, Bob. Jane, Fred, Tom, Dick and Harry, you know, you've got a way of identifying it's you that the teacher is talking to. In this case, we've got to give these nine boxes the ability to understand it is what is being interact interactive with from the user. So we're going to start off by uh, creating a like a kind of a counter, as it were, which is going to be a number so that we can number each of our different boxes. Whilst we are drawing or creating our object, we actually want to give it the, num the number in this process. So we're going to start off by creating a counter, uh, count, uh, square counter. Let's put this count counter square number or something like that. And we're going to start off by making it have the value of one. Okay, so we're initialising it to start counting from one, which is good. Uh, okay, and then down here, we need to give our grid squares an attribute called number, and it's going to be the value of whatever this contains. Uh, attribute or this um, property of our object has the value one currently. And then before we end this function, we just need to update our number so that the next time we use it, it has updated. Now, we're not doing this in a loop because if you remember down here where we've got our four loops, we know that this is the, the square creation process. So we know one plus one is two, so that's gonna now hold the value of two. So the next time that this function is called, this number is gonna be called two. So we're gonna know two goes and gets stored in that property of the object. And then we're gonna get two plus one equals three. So the next time draw square is called, Three is going to be the number that's inserted into the object that's created and then it's going to update and around we go every time that function is called. So now first, so technically as these squares are now created, we are going to be able to know which one's got been created. We can test this even though we haven't got any events taking place yet by going print 
okay and we could say uh, print square name or square number let's call it so it keeps it nice is okay and then I'm just gonna oh, put in a little and I'm just gonna talk you through what I've just done here okay so what I've got going on here is a little print command that's slightly different to what you've seen so far these two dots actually mean concatenation okay so what I'm doing is making a little descent a little sentence now that gets displayed so instead of just showing a variable or a message to myself I'm giving myself a message but I also want to see what the value of number for this particular square that's been created is called so by doing this I can put all of the information onto one line that shows over here in the console and so I've added this bit of string text to this variable to make a sentence so I'm going to hit save all right and we're going to scroll on down to the bottom so what you've got now going on here, so as we can see, let's go back up a little bit. So we've got lots of feedback coming into our console now, which we can tidy up later on. But there is our GP1 show wheel. So we know we are in the event show wheel because we've given ourselves a little bit of feedback here. And again, I covered that in maybe the first or second tutorial on this little series um, when I was talking about the scene template. So that's the uh, first little tip. Then we are going to go into where the next thing that's happened is we've drawn the grid. So we've come down here. Um, the draw grid command has been populated. We've called this function, sending that data to it. We've printed out that command. We know it's being actioned. So this is all good. And as, as this is creating each of the rows, the rows are being called, which are up here. So the rows are being called. So we now know that the row is there and the loops being accessed. So everything is going good. And then we've got this number here. So we've got square number is one, two, three, and if you go all the way down, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. So we now know, even though that these aren't clickable yet because we've not given them that power, we actually know that the square itself knows what its name is, or in this case, its number, okay? So its own identifier. So we know this is square one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when we do add the events in now, we will be able to test to a certain extent what's going on. So what we're gonna do as part of this now, we're gonna give it the ability to listen for events. So this is a method call on the object. So we're gonna create the object. We've given it a name. We've printed it, so we've printed it to the screen so we know it's working. And we know that next time that this function is called, we've updated it. So now we're gonna give it an event listener. So we're gonna to add to it an event listener listen there we go it's come up with me and uh, as all methods there's brackets now this comes with two there's lots of different events there's a top a, a tap event or a touch event we're going to use both within this app in this particular tutorial and video we are just going to be working with a tap event for a moment so we need to put the, the word tap in uh, speeches there we go comma and then we're going to put the name of the function that gets called so we're going to we're going to call this which square tapped job done okay not too complicated now the problem is and this is where we're going to have a little bit of a challenge and this is why i created an array which we're probably going to have to dive into into this next video instantaneously is the fact that which square tapped is a function call but the function doesn't exist right now and for this to work at this location on line 139 which square tapped has already have needs to have been loaded into the device memory, which means it has to have come before this section. But here is the dilemma because we are in the show wheel. So we need to prepare the screen and the display before it is shown, which is why we're coding here. But we actually need the code to be down here where it's show did because these things can only happen once it's on the screen. So what we've got is kind of a bit of like a sort of a paradigm here whereby we've got chicken and egg scenario. We need to add the event listener to the square, but the square is being created before we can use it, which makes sense, but the code has to come before it again. So for the moment, just to show that we've added an event listener, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place the code up here. So local function, oh there i've got to put a bracket oh I put all my spaces in the wrong place there we go let me just come back here okay and let me end this for the moment and all i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that line there for a moment 
um, so that we can print out which square is being tapped on and that means we need to send this information in the function uh, oh no because it's an event listener so we need to put in here an event listener that's my bad okay so we're listening for an event taking place at which point the moment it has happened if it's for this particular function call we will know what's happening and we're going to print now this isn't going to necessarily work correctly because what we need to do is a target so i'm just going to tweak this code a little bit and put event because we the event knows it happens and it's a target and i'm going to bring up the syntax code in the uh the uh documentation in just a moment so you can follow me because you're probably getting a wee bit lost right now but essentially we're going to print on screen the event whichever box it is the target of that so um, an event has occurred because it could be all sorts of event I could have tapped on a button not that one exists yet but that could have been the event so um, first of all it's identifying that an event has taken place then it's identifying the target of that event which in this case will be one of these nine square boxes and then it's going to look at the property of that uh, object and give me and report the number if we've got this correct so I'm going to leave that as it is. Let me just for the moment, so that we don't get this doubling up on screen, I'm going to comment that line out because we know that the numbers are at least working. And I'm going to hit save. Now, if everything works right, the code should execute fine, which it has done. And obviously nothing at the moment has happened. So let's click on a box. So I'm going to click on box number one. And it's reporting to me that square number one has been clicked on. So let's go two, three, four, four, <laughs> five, six seven eight and nine so our event listener is working but our code is all in the wrong places but we can deal with that in a moment because there's a way around that we're going to use an array which is going to be the subject of the next tutorial that follow, follows but essentially we have got an event listener taking place now for taps which is when you go and literally lift your finger off instantly okay as opposed to a touch which is where you hold your finger down and you can move it around okay so a touch might be if you want to drag a game like when you get those little running games and they have to jump over obstacles and things and move them left and right that would be a touch uh, event that you'd want but when you just want to tap a button as it were or in this case just tap one of the squids we're just looking at one of the um the actual little taps as it were, you're going. So we're listening for events. So first of all, has an event happened? What's the target of that event? And if the, that target of the event has a number, we're gonna print it on the screen so we can test everything is working. So that is exactly where we wanna leave it right now. And just so that you can find out more about events, in your Corona documentation, there's two or three things that you can do. First of all, if you go over to guides, um, we have got this whole section here on events and listeners. There's tap, touch and multi-touch. Now I've not had to actually code anything in my app journey in life so far with a multi-touch, but I'm sure at some point there will be. Um, tap and touch I use regularly, so you and we will be using them throughout this game. We'll be using lots of touch events as well. Um, so if I click on that, you'll be able to find out more about what's going on here. So uh, there is lots of ways to call events as well. Um, I've I've coded mine this the way that I have. This is using this add event listener process here. But as you can see, the events always have a target. They have a name, the number of taps. And because we gave our property a specific, um, we gave our object, our square object, a specific property called number, we was able to access it when we wanted to print it to screen. But then, that, you know, the, the, we've also got the X and Y, where on the screen or where on the, the page did something take place as well. So there's lots of different types of events. This goes into touch, which we will sh deal with in the future because it's a little bit more complicated. Um, but that's where you can find out there. And then obviously over in the documentation, if you go to the API reference, move on down, you can see that there's an entire section here on events where it has lots of different information. And there's the tap itself. And this is the syntax that we've used. So um, we've used the event name and it has, we can even count the number of taps as it were, but this is pretty much um, the same kind of code that we've just used, whereby we've, we've declared a local function, given the function a name and it's listening for an event. When the event takes place, we are using a print statement to declare it on screen so that we can see in the console that an event has taken place, it's identified what it is, 
uh, which object it is and then we're going to print the name or in our case we printed a number and then down here that's when we've created the object we added an event listener we've listened for a specific tap event and then we've called that uh, function which is there into place and so that's the way to use a function listener there's also table listeners which I don't generally use so much but there are times when you do need to work this way as well but we will cover that on another day uh, when we need to go there so that's pretty much it from me today so I hope that makes sense now I do endorse you to go straight into my next tutorial if you can uh, which is going to be covering arrays because don't forget we've still got that dilemma of our code now being in the wrong place on our logic of our scene management so we um, need to to sort things out and the easiest way to do that is to use an array um, which is a table or a matrix well, not a matrix but it can be a matrix um, of information about the objects that we are creating those squares so that's going to be covered in our next tutorial